Hey everyone, welcome to the studio. I'm Jess, and guess what? We got an unboxing. Not only do we have an unboxing, but I'm gonna make a plate. So this is like a two for one. We're gonna see what's in the box, and then we're gonna make something with the thing that's in the box. And, and we'll talk about the thing in the box a bit. And I, I know what's in the box, but I haven't seen it yet. So let's open it up and see what we got. Um, I didn't cross out my address, so if you guys zoom in really close, maybe you could see it. But honestly, I run a public studio, so my address is kind of out there because this is a public space. So just saying. All right, I've got my box cutter. I've got my box to cut with said box cutter. This is something that I've been working on for one. Well, there's two things in here. One of them I've been working on for about a month. The other one has been in my head for about six months and it took that long to get it out. Now most of you know me as a potter and a teacher, but I'm also a designer and illustrator and what I do with those talents is I design artwork to go on things such as rolling pins or tote bags or, or whatever. So we have here a couple of my rolling pins. Here's some of my designs. And this is one of my newest. And then my brand newest is in here. Like this, the newest top secret one is down here. So there was two. So this one, let's open this up, is one that I actually uh, designed as a underglaze decal first. So I also have a line of underglaze decals. And, oh wait, I might, I might have some right here in this drawer. Hold on. Do I have any in this drawer? In this magic drawer of decals? Maybe, maybe not. That would be sad. Oh, nope, there they are, right there. All right, let's take a look-see. So I've got a, a bunch of them. This is my mushroom underglaze decal. And now it's a rolling pin. Now, this is probably the second time you're seeing this rolling pin because I did a redesign. I designed it the first time so that it would roll. Um, well, let's just show you, it's right here. So this one rolls, and you can see the mushrooms are upside right this way. This one, I turned them sideways. So when you're rolling them into clay, you're rolling them sideways, but actually it'll give you a really long strip of clay. And what I like about that is if you're gonna do a platter or a mug or something, you don't have a seam. You don't have any of that at all. Now we're gonna make pots with these, so don't worry, you're watching this and you're like, I don't care, I wanna see you make pots. Hold on, we have to have the tools to get the texture in our pots, and these are the tools. So just simmer down, we're gonna get there, don't worry. So the mushroom pin has redesi been redesigned, I sat there and did that, and I have to tell you, I love it even more, and mm, Fresh cut rolling pins smell so good. If you order one of my rolling pins, smell it and tell me if you do not love it. It's yummy because I think they're made from maple and so when they burn it, it kind of smells a bit like maple syrup being made. Mm. Anyhow, so the mushroom rolling pin is now available and it rolls in the, what we'd consider landscape, right? So it rolls long or along the side. So that's the redesign for the mushroom pin, which, is awesome. So that is out and you can buy that right now. Actually, by the time this video goes up, you can buy both these. But right now, as I'm filming it, you can't. And the other one is one I spent a ton of time designing. You, you've never seen this design before. It's brand spanking new. I did not make an underglaze decal from it. I've done nothing with it except maybe use it to carve some, maybe my own personal work that you haven't seen yet. But it's not available commercially, right, anywhere. So this one right here is my new one for spring. Just see if I can get this off. That's the packing material. And it's called Spring Bunnies. Ah, because it's, it's hard to see, you're far away. But, but believe me, it's cute little bunnies hopping. It's got flowers, butterflies, snails, ladybugs, some little mushrooms, baby bunnies leaping bunnies, bunnies for days. And each one of these designs and all my rolling pins are hand drawn. And that's why it takes me a long time. You know, I could go out there and I could grab clip art. I could actually buy and download images, which is fine. If you're a designer and you do that, that's great. That's good for you if that's how you design. I don't design that way. I have to hand draw every single element that goes into my rolling pins. That's just a thing I have as an artist that I need to do. So all the little thingies on here, all these cute little elements, they are each and every one of them hand drawn by me. 
and then they're turned into rolling pins which I have to create the pattern for and, and all that. So there's a bit of work that goes into them but it's so worth it. Now we're gonna um, use these to make some pots. We're gonna make a plate. We're just gonna make a quick little plate and I do want to say that for taking care of them, oh it smells good too. Yes, watch me smell rolling pins. That's all we're gonna do today. <laughs> no, we're gonna make some pots but um, I'm gonna show you now how to take care of them because these are cut from raw wood, you need to treat them just like you would a handmade countertop or any piece of fine wood furniture. Because these are handmade in the USA, right, so the wood comes from a supplier here in the US and is made out of Texas, so you need to take care of them properly. They're really high quality. They have the spinning barrel and the handles stay straight, which I love because then you can just roll this. and. Because they're food grade wood, you might be watching this and you're like, yeah, but I'm not a potter. I'm not going to use them in clay. <laughs> Don't use them in clay. Put them in cookie dough. Who doesn't want spring bunnies for their Easter cookies or just any kind of cookie? How about some mushroom cookies? Oh yeah, you want mushroom cookies. I know you do. So if you don't make pottery, or even if you do make pottery, maybe you need some for making cookies with or baking with, right? You totally could do that. All right, let me show you how to take care of these. I'm gonna do that right here next. I'm just gonna throw my trash off to the side and I'll clean it up later. All right, here we have a close-up of the new mushrooms. Ooh, cute. And the spring bunnies, and I don't think you could really see how cute the spring bunnies are. But look at that bunny right there. That one right there hopping. Oh my goodness, so, so cute. Look at this one up here. Has a little butterfly landing on its nose. And how about this one right here? This one has a little snail friend up here. And let's see, there's one, let's find it, that has a baby. This one right here. This one has a little baby right there. And then there's our flowers and all kinds of things in there with them. Oh, you can really see that. Doesn't it look nice? And you can see where these were cut with the laser right there, how they burn into it. But we will see them in clay in a minute. But first I want to teach you how to take care of your rolling pins. So if you've ever had a wood countertop made for you or a cutting board made or bought a really nice handmade cutting board, you know you need to treat them. And I like to use mineral oil. And so you'll see it says mineral oil uh, lubricant laxative. You can use this for whatever you want. Personally, I'm going to use it on my rolling pins, but if you need any of those things, you could just use it for that too. And then I'm going to take a paper towel. I'm just going to fold this up. And I'm going to pour some of my mineral oil, about a quarter size dollop, on my paper towel. You might make a little mess, but it's okay. And then you're just going to take it. And I like to lightly rub it across the entire surface and you'll see it change color and become richer and deeper. And you're going to want to repeat this process every six months. So you'll just rinse them down well, let them dry all the way, and then do the mineral oil again. Or if you notice them drying out, you just want to keep the wood in good condition so it doesn't crack. So look at the difference. Here's one we mineral oiled, this one we didn't. You can really tell. Oop, got a little mineral oil on my work table. And so I'm going to also get the handles and I'm going to get the whole thing because it's all wood, right? You want to make sure you take care of the whole entire rolling pin. And you'll notice on the handles, on one side is my name. That's me right there. And on the other side is the texture shop. And that is Sharon Hoppy, who makes my rolling pins for me and she also has a line of her own rolling pins which were, are lovely too so you might want to check out her rolling pins and they're all available on claysharemarket.com I will link that here in the description and everything so you can find that so we got the bunnies done they're all mineral oiled up we'll set that to the side and I'm going to do the mushrooms and I really love putting the mineral oil on and seeing how the color of the rolling pin changes. So we're going to do this one. Light, skimming it across the top so you're not rubbing all of it in one area. You want to spread that dollop out across the whole pin. You could use a shop towel. I use the paper towels just because I have them handy. I don't really keep shop towels per se. I do keep cloths like hand towels to use for throwing with, right?
but I don't want to use my muddy clay towels for cleaning this off. If you want to designate one specifically for doing this, you could do that. Maybe keep it in a baggie or something. So I got that. Look how gorgeous this wood is and how cute all those mushrooms are. So they're all different sized mushrooms. Big, little, tall, skinny, fat, short, you name it. I put them in there. Some shiitake, some portabella, <laughs> some wild mushrooms, you name it, it's in there. I even put a few mushrooms in the bunny pin as well. So if you look really closely, right there's a mushroom. And some of them are, let's see, there's a mushroom. And then there's a little cluster, there's a cluster right there of mushrooms tucked in. So if you like kind of wildlife or woodsy pattern, the spring bunny, and if you want something that's all mushroomy, then the mushrooms. Yay! They're a little different tone and that's just because the wood that is used is different. It's just how it is, you know? Just like people are all different colors, so isn't wood. All right, so now we have these prepped up and they need to sit overnight before we put them in clay. That's just how it works best so that the mineral oil can be absorbed into the wood. And then when we come back tomorrow, we're going to roll them in clay and we're going to make a plate. And this is not, um, it's not the most earth shattering plate we're going to make, but I tell you, it's the first thing I make when I get a new texture tool because it really lets me see how the pattern is going to look and I can really gauge how I can glaze it and everything and it dries really fast so it's a great piece to put in the kiln and test the glaze on a new pattern. All right, so let these sit overnight and then tomorrow we're going to make a plate. All right, so let's make a plate. Now normally when I work from slab, which is what we're going to be doing, I will have my slab roller and I will roll out a slab and just cut a piece off and if you follow me you'll see me do that many many times but I thought we would do today is I would show you how to roll out a slab and I've done this before and I've taught plenty of of how to make a slab right but I thought we would just do that so here I have my big block of clay this is 25 pounds and I'm just going to cut I would say a good inch and a half, two inches off the top, just a big hunk like that. And then we're just going to set this to the side. Okay, so we have our block of clay and this is more than enough to make a plate that the size we're going to make. Now I'm going to make a plate that is about this size right here. So this is eight and a half inches. I'm going to take my block of clay and I have a rolling pin. So what do you need to do this? Rolling pin. And then if you want it to be a certain thickness exactly, you might want to pick up some of these slab thickness strips. And yeah, they're two different colors because I use them for other things. And I did use one of them with dark clay as a straight edge and it got dyed from the dark clay. Not a big deal, but that's what happens if you use them with dark clay. So we're just going to start by flattening out our slab. Then we're going to turn. And you can already see how much bigger it has gotten. There. So now we're going to go ahead and switch to rolling out the slab. Sorry about that. My work surface is uh, a little slippery today. So we'll roll. And do you see how I roll almost to the edge, but not quite off the edge? And that's how I keep from having an uneven slab. And this is why I love my slab roller, because I can roll out 25 pounds of clay at a time and have a great big sheet of clay that I then can use to make as many plates as I want. So let me show you how to use the thickness strips. So you're going to take the same thickness, so this is a quarter inch, this is a quarter inch. You put them on each side of your slab and then you take your rolling pin. Hopefully your rolling pin is big enough, right? You can get longer rolling pins and then you just roll it along these rails like this. Now I've got my baby rolling pin. I do have a bigger one. Did I? Are you in here, big rolling pin? I don't even know where I put my big rolling pin right now. Okay, 
So we're not going to have Jess look around for her giant rolling pin. We're just going to go like this. There. But I tell you, at this point, when I'm making plates, I really don't worry about it. And I just go ahead and flip and roll. There. And you'll notice my clay has gotten a little discolored from the board I'm working on. That's completely normal. This will burn away in the kiln. If you ever find that your clay has any mold on it or discoloration from sitting, it will completely burn out. It's not stuck that way. I promise. It's going to change. Okay, so we have our slab ready to go. And I'm going to grab a rib. And we're just going to smooth this out. And I'm going to do this on both sides. I'm going to just smooth this out. So this is compressing the clay, smoothing out any texture, helping to align the particles. And it also lets you check to see if your slab is even. And I can tell right now that it's not. So I'm going to roll. There we go. Much better. Much, much better. And then I release it. Okay, so I think we're good to go. Let's roll, let's roll some texture. Um, I think we are gonna do, what should we do first? I've already shown the mushrooms. Let's do the bunnies. Cause I haven't, I've never pressed the bunnies in clay. This has never been in clay. I have no idea what this looks like. This could look terrible. So if it does, will I still put the video up? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> My goodness gracious <gasps> look at those bunnies oh my gosh they're so cute too cute all right so I don't need all this clay right now I only want about this much clay although there's so much clay there oh bunnies how do I pick how do I pick which bunnies get put on and which don't so we're gonna lay down this is just I should maybe tell you what this is this is just a plastic plate that I paid you guessed it, $2 for at the dollar store. And this was around Christmas time. You can tell, can't you? And it, it was very inexpensive. And it's just, you know, the best time to buy plates and things because they put them on clearance. So I'm just going to lay this down here. Now I've released the clay so that it won't stick because I don't want that to happen. And I'm going to find an area that I'm really happy with the pattern, which would be right here and then I'm going to cut it out. Now you can use a knife and cut along with the knife. It does a really nice job. Sometimes I will use a needle tool if I have a very intricate edge, like if it's scalloped with lots of little scallops, <laughs> then I would use my needle tool. Okay, so we just release that and then we're going to pop this off right here. Now this clay is perfectly good. I will still use this for another project. So we're just going to set this off to the side over here. Put that over there. We'll make something out with, else with that later. So here we have the bunny and you can really see what that pattern looks like now. You see how cute those bun buns are? So cute. Just cute on wheels, right? And now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to use a GR pottery form. I love using them for this. And I have the five inch round and I'm just going to line this up approximately in the center, right? It doesn't have to be exact, but you want to get it as close as possible. And then we're going to flip it over. And then I'm just going to sit it right back down on the board it was on. And then we'll press just lightly with our hands just to shape it down over that GR pottery form. And now I'm doing lots of shuffling. I've got my banding wheel. Make sure that's on there well. And I've got a damp sponge. I'm just gonna clean off my rib using a red Cheryl mud tool. I'm gonna smooth on the top of the form. And then I'm gonna use the curved side right here to do the sides. So you just spin on the banding wheel and the rib, do you see how the rib's doing all the work? And you just keep going around and around until you come to 
the flat where the side rim here meets the board. Don't want to apply a lot of pressure where this, this comes together, where the side and the bottom meet. You do not want to crush in here. And if you find you're losing your little bunny pattern or whatever texture you're putting on your plates, you're pressing too hard. You don't have to crush these in. This is a very flexible, soft rib. It's really easy to work with. Do you see? I'm actually being very, very gentle right now. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm really, it's just floating on the surface, just like that. And I'm gonna drag my sponge along the edge here and that gets it damp enough so I can just run my fingers along and that, that helps to set up that edge for later cleaning so it's nice and smooth. Now, that clay that I had before, right here, we're gonna pull this back and I'm gonna grab about, about half of it. And we're gonna make a foot for this plate. You don't need to if you don't want to. It's entirely up to you. But this is a cute little spring bunny plate. I wanna use it for you know, my Easter celebration or, or whatever you have coming up. So I want to raise it up. You know, when you put a foot on a plate, it elevates it a little bit. It makes it a little more special. Now there's nothing wrong with flat bottom plates. Those are fabulous if you want to stack them in your cabinet and conserve space. But just a little foot ring on here is just a nice addition. And I like to use the foot maker and I do have a class on making this little guy right here. It's super easy to make. And all you do is just drag it through your clay, like so, and voila, a foot, just like that. Well, we're gonna attach it, but you know, you get the picture, right? That was pretty simple. So now we're gonna grab our slip and I'm gonna take and slip and score. Big gobba slip, we don't want that. Slip and score. Now we're going to flip this up. And then you just line it up with that edge right here where that side meets the bottom. And just line it up all the way around. And then we are going to have an area here where they overlap. So what you do which is really simple, is you just cut down through both layers. And I like to cut at a bit of an angle. Oh, I think that's gonna work just like that. There, so that everything is joined. Now I have an area here that has a, a little um, depression. I'm just gonna fill that in with a bit of clay. This clay is very wet and sticky. And that's just where, when I was moving the slab I laid it across the edge of a board and I got a little depression. So I'm just gonna take care of that right now. Now we'll take a damp sponge and you know, I do that sponge taco, that's what this is. We'll just all the way around, simple and easy to do. Ooh, stay put there. And then using this pinching motion, I'm just gonna compress this foot ring on. And this is when I shape the foot ring to make sure it looks more rounded. You know, I'm not trying to pretend this plate is a wheel thrown plate. It's hand built and I'm completely fine with that. I don't mind the look of a hand built plate. I actually love them. I rarely throw plates anymore. I almost always will hand build them just because I love the ease of it and the fact that I can get the same exact shape every time when I use a plate like this. Right? I can get this exact same profile as many times as I want. So they're perfect for making sets. If you want a set of eight plates for yourself, or if you're making pottery to sell and you want to be able to offer dinnerware sets to people, this is a great way to do it. All right, so I'm just smoothing these edges and where the foot ring attaches. There we go. All right, so we're gonna let this set mm, sometimes overnight, but on my today in my studio it's really humid, so 
I mean, it's really hot, not humid. It's really dry in the studio today. So this will probably be ready in a couple hours for me to go ahead and flip it over and remove that form. So just let this sit, and then when we come back, we're going to flip everything over and see what it looks like. And I'm going to make a mushroom one too, the exact same way as I made this one. So I'm not going to show you how to make it because it's the exact same way. Uh, but you know what? Let's, let's do this first. I got some clay right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. We want to see what the mushroom one looks like, right? You want to see what it looks like in clay. This is the back side of the bunny. So it's been beat up a little bit. But you know what? I think I have, wait a minute. Oh, ho, ho, this is my four by 12. That's my mug. Oh, I bet I can make a mug. I think I have enough here to make a mug from this. So let's go ahead and roll the, I'm gonna flip it over and smooth the bunnies. Oh, there's, bye bunnies. They're so cute. I just feel bad doing that because they're so cute. I feel bad smoothing them away, but we're gonna put, we're gonna put mushrooms on this side. So I have a class on making a mug and that's the exact mug I'm gonna make from the mushrooms, but I will make a plate too. But right now I wanna show you how the mushrooms look. Oh my, oh yeah, they look really good. Um, oh, I wanna, I wanna lift this up for you to see it, but you know, let's just do it this way. I know, technically we're not supposed to lift clay up like this, but look at that. Look how nice they look. Oh, so yummy, fabulous. So I'm gonna make a little mushroom mug from this and I'll make a plate. And when I come back, we'll flip out the bunny plate and the mushroom plate. All right, so my plate has sat up for about an hour. Um, you can let them set overnight if your studio is very humid. If your studio is really dry and there's a lot of airflow, you won't need to let them sit up that long. And on smaller plates, you can actually flip them over sooner than large plates. I pretty much always let large plates sit overnight and then flip them out. But for small plates like this, sometimes for really small plates, I only let them set for like five, 10 minutes. That's it, sometimes not even. Sometimes I take them right out. So we're gonna flip it over and we're just gonna take another board and sandwich it on top. Now putting this board on top is doing a couple things. One, we're gonna flip it out onto it. But when I sit the board onto it, I sort of pat it down first and that will help level this foot. So I don't have to worry about having a rocky foot or uneven foot. So we're gonna put this on here, take the whole thing, flip it over. And actually, we'll keep the banding wheel under it because I'm gonna smooth the rim. And let's take out our pottery form. Pop this out. Now, if you go to pull it out and it's fighting you and it doesn't wanna come out, then it's not ready. It needs to sit a little longer. So just leave it alone, flip it back over and you can work on it later. Oh my gosh, bunny plate, so cute. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this rim. This is all I do for my rims, is I just take a sponge and I let it roll around it and it's smooth, that's it, it's done, that's all. Now you wanna let this dry, I usually drape it with plastic and I will let this dry overnight with plastic on it. I'll check it the next day, if it's stiffened up enough, I'll put a weight bag in the center and that is just an old t-shirt or sock that I filled with cat litter or rice or some sort of material to weigh the plate down to keep it from warping. And you'll keep it covered in plastic while you do that. And then as soon as it's bone dry, you're gonna go ahead and bisque fire and then glaze however you wanna glaze it. But look how cute this is. Oh my goodness. I love it, I love the bunnies. So here we have our finished bunny plate. Well, I say finished, but made. It just needs to be dried and then fired and glazed, right? Those are the next steps in the process. And here's our super cute mushroom plate right there. So you can see all the cute mushrooms. And I'm also gonna show you, I quickly made a little mushroom mug. So my hand-built mug class that you can watch here, um, this is the mug I make. It's the same exact shape, same exact everything, except I use the mushroom texture Oh goodness me, you know you want a mushroom mug, right? You gotta have a mushroom mug in your life. <laughs> you will love it. Oh my gosh, they're all so cute, and the bunnies as well. So this was a great way to show my two new rolling pins, but um, also a good way to, to make a plate, right? That's a really easy, simple way to make a plate. All we used was a plastic dollar store plate as our template, 
right? And then this GR Pottery form. And you know, we have discounts on GR Pottery forms, so go to clayshare.com and under resources you can find those codes. So if you're going to buy GR Pottery forms, you can save money. So check that out. Also, the rolling pins are on claysharemarket.com. I sell them at my wholesale price, like that's the price they are, so you're not going to find a discount code or them cheaper anywhere else. So just putting it out there. So you, in case you want to ask me, I just gave you the answer to it. So um, here's a little, little tip I have for you all. Any plastic or paper plate can work as a template. Any, any that you have. So what you do is when you buy it, you know, find a standard size that you like the profile. This is the important part. This was that wig wibbly wobbly edge, right? That's how we got our wavy edge. Find one you like and then just buy it and measure it. Now this measures eight and a half inches across, right? It's eight and a half inches. And I know it'll fit this perfectly. Now I have a bunch of numbers on the back. This is actually a six and a half inch diameter here and five inches diameter here. So that's what my two numbers are. And this is sold, I believe, as a six and a half inch circle. So I know that a six and a half inch circle fits perfectly with an eight and a half inch plate. So I know that this is the form that I always will use for this size plate. And you can go ahead and buy some plates and figure out which form will fit inside it the best to make your plate. I suggest you try to look for plates that, um, that will have a form difference of two inches, meaning this is an eight and a half inch, this is six and a half inches from edge to edge. So we'll have a one inch rim. That's what I have here. That rim is one inches across. You could do a half inch, you could do a quarter, but then it's getting a little tight. So I wouldn't go too, too small. You know, I would, I would definitely try to go for at least a one inch rim or a half inch rim, somewhere in there. Don't go smaller. You won't really, it won't really be helpful on a plate, right? So that's a great little way to, to make a plate, right? Easy, simple, and fun. So again, here we have the finished plates and you can see how cute this is. Now this is Laguna B-Mix 5. It's a mid-range stoneware. It's going to shrink about 12%. So if we have an eight and a half inch plate and we take 12% off that, that's about an inch approximately. So it's going to be about a seven and a half inch plate, seven and three quarters. So it's a good size breakfast or salad or luncheon plate. And if you go up to the next size, um, I would use, I believe I have an 11 inch plastic plate. So I have this in an eight and a half and I have this in an 11 inch. So then for the 11 inch, I would want the nine inch circle, right? That gives me that one inch rim. So that's what I would do for, for those. And this works for anything out there that you find. So if you find a platter form that you want to use as your template, well, GR Pottery has platter and oval rectangles. Here's some right here, all different sizes. So what you can do is you can go look at the craft and hobby stores, dollar stores, wherever, and see what they have for plastic plates or paper plates that you like the design of and check GR Pottery Forms. They may have a form for you that will match perfectly for the interior of your exterior. And you can make tons of things really simply and get these gorgeous little plate profiles and it's really simple. You know, I used to make my own templates. I used to cut my own out of cardboard. I would design them, I would draw them out, and then I would cut them. And it took forever. And yeah, I was getting some pretty interesting, unique templates. And I do have a class on making your own template, which is a fabulous way to do it if you want to make your own design. But there are so many lovely plate designs out there. I encourage you to check out what they have and make some of your own plates. Make some plates and you will love it. This is, so I'm gonna tell you right now, when I teach a workshop, the first thing we do, we make a plate. And when I was teaching pottery, the first thing we did, we made plates from slabs because I know everybody wants to get on the wheel. Everybody wants to throw big pots. But if you sit down on a wheel with 10 pounds of clay and try to throw for your very first time making pottery, you're gonna fail and you're gonna fail miserably and it's gonna be disappointing and you're not gonna to wanna to try again. And I don't want anybody to feel that way at all when they're making pottery. So this is why I start everybody off with a plate like this because at the end of the class, you are gonna have a very beautiful plate and it's a great place to start. It gets you used to the material, you get to know how clay responds and you get to decide if you even like working in clay because you might not. And this is a good way to find that out without um, 
you know, all of the anxiety and stress of throwing on the wheel. So I've been throwing pottery for 20 years, over 20 years actually, and it does have a huge learning curve, but it is not better than hand building. Hand building is not better than wheel throwing. They're equal. They're like two different halves of a whole. It's just other ways of making in pottery. So what you need to do is find out the thing you like the best, or maybe, maybe you try both. I do all of it because I, you know, can't pick. But the fact is, I'm equally good at wheel throwing as I am hand building, but I do it every day, all day. So that's the difference there. So anyhow, basically what I'm saying is, go make a plate. <laughs> you will love it, and then you'll have a plate you can actually use and cherish, and maybe make a spring bunny plate for somebody you love. Make a spring bunny plate for some bunny, right? There's some bunny in your life that needs this plate. <laughs> All right, everyone, you can find me on ClayShare as always. Follow us on Instagram, it's clay underscore share. On Instagram, on Facebook, we're just ClayShare. And of course, go to ClayShare.com, sign up for our email so you can be entered in the giveaway contest that we do every month, which is the perfect time for me to give a plug to Charlie Sevo from Play in the Mud Designs, who is the fabulous maker of the apron I'm wearing right here. This is the split hem hand building apron that says Clay Share on it. You won't get one that says Clay Share, but I do. And I have a whole bunch of her other aprons. She has throwing aprons, tons of stuff. So check those out. But she's sponsoring this month's giveaway. We're giving away four aprons. So if you win this month's giveaway, you get to pick the apron you want. You don't have to have this one. You don't have to have another one that you've seen me wear. You can pick yours and you get to have the apron you want. And if you can't wait, you can always go to claysharemarket.com and buy an apron because they're handmade in the USA by a potter who knows what they're doing. So those are like, check all those boxes, get yourself an apron. Plus they're cute. Look, I match my clothes to it. It's just how I roll. All right, everyone, as always, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me here in the studio and I hope you all make some great pots. <laughs>